Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. As the economy continues to recover, there are still people dealing with the scars of the recession and trying to fix their credit. Top that off with the fact that one of the largest credit bureaus in the nation had its information hacked. We'll deal with an expert to talk about that credit bureau in just a moment. But we begin with Ellen Kaloje, who talked to some people trying to dig their way out of debt. Thank you, Larry. It is true that millions of Americans have racked up significant debt over the past decade, especially during the height of the recession. But now that the economy is looking up and more people are working, we wanted to get some practical tips on how to pay off our debts. Two years ago, we interviewed three young adults desperately trying to pay off their massive student loans. I'm trying to move out of my, my parents' house and everything is expensive and I have to pay back this, these loans that I already have over 50 grand. After I was done, I had $25,000 in debt. I started out with about $100,000, and it's been eight years, and I'm only down to 60. They're still paying off their loans, but working hard to get rid of them for good, just like others trying to pay off credit cards, mortgages, and cars. Some experts say the Great Recession did have some positive effects on people with debt. It really made them um, look at themselves and look at what their real priorities were and where there was money, you know, was really going. And they found out that, you know, they were putting money in places that weren't a priority for them. So now that they're slowly getting themselves back on track, you know, they're going to learn from those lessons and take better actions going forward. Stephanie Bittner is the New Jersey Outreach Manager for Clarify, a nonprofit organization that helps people with their finances. She says paying their mortgage is the number one reason New Jerseyans come in for help. It's very difficult because they are sometimes just intimidated by dealing with these lenders that, you know, they've never been in this situation before. Um, they're not sure the exact steps to take. They get frustrated by the fact that they have to send in a lot of information. And people in New Jersey are not alone in sometimes feeling overwhelmed with all kinds of bills. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, the average U.S. household owes about $137,000 on their mortgage, about $16,000 in credit card debt, and $50,000 in student loans. Bittner says going to a credit counseling service is the best way to come up with a budget that works. But there are some simple tricks you can do right now to shave off some debt such as using the envelope method. That means if you spend too much on, say, eating out, put the cash you're willing to spend each week into an envelope. But, you know, when Thursday comes and they want to eat out at lunch for work, they're going to notice there's no money in the envelope. So that means that day and the next day until that money gets refilled, they have to kind of bring their lunch to work. So it's just an easy way to put some boundaries around those particular categories in your life that you don't have boundaries around. And it's just an easy, simple way. And every single person that I've talked to who has ever used it says it works and it's effective. She also says try to pay your credit card balance in full every month, but that's easier said than done. So pay off your credit cards that have the highest interest rates first and try to use generic credit cards from a large bank or company instead of ones from individual stores because they usually have a much higher interest rate. President Trump says that if his proposed tax cuts go through, that would mean corporations would have more money to hire more people. And he says more Americans of all tax brackets would have more money in their pockets that they could certainly use to pay off their debts. Reporting for Jersey Matters, I'm Ellen Kaloje. All right, thank you, Ellen. Let's talk more about the security breach. Paul Oster is the president of Better Qualified Credit Experts. Really quickly, what is that? So we're business and consumer credit experts. So we help the individual that might have issues on their credit reports with late payments, collections, judgments, charge-offs. Identity theft is obviously the biggest thing that we're involved in right now. And on the on the business side, helping the, the business owner get lines of credit and separate their business credit from their personal credit. So you deal with credit bureaus all the time and people who are interested in their credit in credit bureaus. And tell, from that perspective, how big of a breach was this? Well, this is uh, not in volume, but this is the most damaging breach we've had because of the nature of the data. So they have everything that they could create a new Larry. 
you know, it, it may have already been done, and I don't like to be the fear monger out there, but the reality is they have all of the information that they need. So the information, whoever stole it, they're not the ones that use it. They steal it, and then they sell that data on the black market through the dark web. So whatever information they took is already being sold. We know this for a fact. It's already being sold on the dark web. And what is it used for? What, what, what is somebody going to do with my information that is, that is that valuable to sell? Sure, so people always say, oh, I don't have any money in the bank account, you know. They, they don't want my, my uh, identity. Well, they do, because this is synthetic identity theft, true name identity theft, where they want to create a completely new person but with your credit history. Uh, the, the most important thing here is that we need to kind of be aware and be aware of what's gonna happen now. So people are getting uh, the vishing phone calls where people are calling up, uh, they're posing as the IRS, they're acting like they're your bank, your credit card company, because they have your phone number and they know you have a, a Chase account or a Bank of America account. Or they're, they're sending phishing emails. And these emails look like they're coming from your accounts. So if you get an email uh, from one of your bank accounts or, or credit card accounts or any account, you know, don't even, I say don't even open it. Simply pick up the phone and call the number that you have on file for your account because you don't want to open the email and call the number that's in the email because that's not the right phone number and you don't want to click on any links that are in that email. It's that frightening that you can't trust any emails right Don't trust now. any email. None. What can be done about this now? What, how, how do we protect our information? What does the consumer do? Let me interrupt you. There's no protection. So there's no such thing as identity theft protection. I call it identity theft detection. So we, we've already seen that the government can't protect our data. You had the Department of Homeland Security, the Office of Personnel Management. All of these big government agencies have had their own data breaches. And certainly the large data corporations themselves can't protect it. So it's up to us to try and detect what's happened as, as soon as possible. So you do that by checking your credit reports on a regular basis. You know, when was the last time you looked at your credit report? And you looked at every single light item. When was the last time you went over your credit card statement? And I'm not talking about, you know, just scrolling down and looking for the big ticket items, because if it's $12, $18, we, we tend to skip over those. We don't even look to see what it was for. So Is Equifax doing anything to make this right? Well, they are, but it's, it, to me, it's almost too little too late. Um, you know, they're offering free uh, credit monitoring for one year. Thanks for nothing. This, is, this data breach will have legs for a lifetime. Unless we come up with a different way to check somebody's credit or identify people, that data is going to be out there forever. Well, that's really important because right now the social security numbers, the last four numbers of your social security numbers used to identify almost all of us. That's not secure anymore. That's not secure anymore. And, and so take it a step further, and this is where I fault Equifax on, on many different levels, but after the breach, Equifax creates a separate URL and website for people to go in and find out whether or not they were victims. Well, as soon as you do that and you go outside of your original domain and URL, the, the hackers created 200 fake domains. It's called typo squatting. So Equifax support team themselves were tweeting out the wrong URLs and websites for people to go and check. Take into account on top of that, they actually now asked for the last six digits of your social security number, which only leaves the, the first three. And I can find out your first three just by knowing where you were born. So if I got the last six because I went into Equifax and gave them my last six, I could find out your first three very easily. You've I, painted a horrible scenario. It so is. So how do I protect myself? So again, it's not protection, it's detection. Unfortunately- so there's no protection. There is no protection. All of our information, look, this is before the Equifax data breach. I've been you know, shouting this from the rooftops for 11 years. All of our information is in 10 million different databases. So the best I can do is find out if it happened to me? After the fact. So there are, there are places where you can go to search the dark web to see if your information is in these chat rooms being bought and sold. Credit monitoring. And unfortunately, you can't use one of these free services because, you know, I'm sure you've heard it. You get what you pay for. Right. So you have to spend a couple of bucks. You don't have to spend $35, $40 a month. If you're looking for a good credit monitoring program, 
$15 a month. Just make sure it has the resolution service so you can call a fraud specialist if you get the alert. Hey, Larry, somebody just bought a car in South Carolina. What would you do? You know, you're at work, you get the alert. You better be able to pick up the phone and call your credit monitoring service and say, help me. Thank you so much. I really Thank appreciate you, it. How do people get a hold of you? So they can find us. Uh, we have a website, betterqualified.com. Uh, you know, all of this stuff. We have, uh, I have the data breach survival guide that's on there for free. Uh, Two-step verification is a big thing right now. Uh, not all accounts offer it, but most of them do. So go ahead and do it. I know it takes an extra six seconds to get into your own accounts, but it's well worth the aggravation. Great information. Thank you so much for being here. Paul Oster, president of Better Qualified Credit Experts. When we come back, there is a brand new app to help people specifically in New Jersey, students buy textbooks cheaper when we come right back.